The firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, both in heaven and earth, whether thrones or dominions. from that place of being in ascension 
And as I bring it down, Father God, to the people, Lord, I pray that their hearts will be enlightened, Father God, that they would understand about this kingdom of God and about this great place that you have for us as sons and daughters of God. Amen. Help us to understand and realize, Father God, that our significance comes from you, Father God. We don't need significance from the world. We don't need significance from one another. We need our significance from you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, for this. I thank you, Lord, for those that are partaking today, Lord, this bread of life, Father. We bless you and we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Like yeah, a couple of weeks ago, our brother Daniel said, well, Joseph, we're going to have a conference. And I said, okay. And he goes, you're going to be the first speaker. And I said, okay. I didn't, I, I've never, you know, been a part of anything like this. I just, like I said, I just do what I do. And, uh, and like I said, we, we, I mean, I was, you know, excited and then, you know, I was just waiting on the Lord all this time for him to begin to bring his word to me, right? Amen. Now, the, 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 uh, tonight's uh, theme, right, Acts 11. I want you to turn to that. Amen. Amen. It says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you Come on now. into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Now one thing we got to understand about this heavenly realm, this heavenly place, is that the scripture says in, um, in Ephesians, right, uh, 1, 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. According as he has chosen us in him, I want y'all to say this, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. in him, Amen. right, in Jesus. Amen. So it says, uh, who hath blessed us all, it says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So this thing about the heavenly is what the Lord started helping me understand is that when you're coming from that place of the heavenly, right, you're coming from that place that's above, right? And it's interesting because these past few weeks, the Lord has been building on this, and I didn't see it the way I see it now. And uh, and like I said, I, I, I'm getting ready to bring it to you, but let me read something else to you about this same Jesus, right? Amen. Well, the Bible says about Jesus that he ever lives to make intercession for the saints, right? So it's interesting that, you know, Brother Daniel, you're talking about the lady that you prayed for today, and uh, and that's what that's what... That's what the Lord showed me is that this lesson or this teaching is called the mountain of the house of the Lord. And then it says prayer, the place of ascension. Okay? Amen. And uh, if you'll turn to Haggai chapter 1, we're going to read some scriptures here. Amen? we got to lay the foundation, right? We've got to get some understanding here about what the Lord is doing here in our hearts. First of all, Jesus said, if I by the finger of God cast out devils, then you know that the kingdom of God has come unto you. Amen. Right? Amen. In other words, ideas and philosophies and views that don't line up with the word of God, God's always intent on rooting out that corruptible seed in our lives. So in Haggai 1, 2, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, this people say the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should, not, should be built. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O you, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Come on, brother. Now therefore, thus said the Lord, consider your ways. Now look at this verse in, in the Amplified, Haggai 1.5. Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, and set your mind on what, he, what has come to you, O nation. In other words, Look at our society, and look at our nation, and look at the world, and look what's come to the nation. Look, look what's come to the world. Look at all the fear that people are operating in, right? The diseases that are, that are out there plaguing people's lives and killing people and destroying people's lives, and the, and the jobs that we're not able to partake of, you know, and all the industries that are suffering. Look at all the, the idolatry that got torn down. For example, you know, these sports players, and these football players, and these baseball players, and all these entertainers and singers, they're all shut down, right? Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, God is intent on helping us understand this heavenly realm. This, you know, the script, Jesus said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So there's a will of God that God is trying to help us understand here. So he says, uh, consider your ways and set your mind on what has come to you, all right? So the nation, the United States, the world, look at all the chaos and the fear. They don't have any faith toward God, okay? Now, in verse 8, skipping on to verse 8, he says, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, said the Lord. So now, this prophet Haggai was speaking to uh, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, and these guys, and, 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 and later on we're going to see here, so let me keep reading. You look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house is, is, that is a waste. And you run every man to his own house, okay? Now, question, who is the house of God? Who is the house of God? Me. All right. And he's saying here, it says that, Why, said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man to his own house. In other words, you're willing to administer for your own life and for your own family, and you're willing to bless them and help them, but what about the people? Right? And I'm not just talking about us right here. Because I know what God is doing here. He's making disciples, amen? amen. He's teaching us and training us his ways so that we can be strong in the Lord and go out and begin to do the work of God, which is bringing every man to the Father, right? Reconcile it. So then he says in verse 13, Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, said the Lord. So in other words, if we're building the house, God is with us. Amen. You understand? And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnants of the people, and they came and did work. So work here means occupation, business, or being busy. In other words, being about the Father's business in service and or in ministry, that is, his serving. In the house, and the house is a household and a family of the Lord of hosts, their God. So they got busy in doing the work of God, amen. And helping one another, serving to one another with no expectation of any kind of return. In other words, because we do it as unto the Lord. Okay? So, we are the house of God. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Amen? <clears throat> we are the temple of God. Amen? So, as, a, as an individual that's that, uh, over my home, right, I have the administration there, my wife and my children. And then when we come collectively together, right, you got your eldership, right, that, that has the governments in the house of God. But all of us should be busy about doing what you do, right? And it's important to understand what you do. For example, some of us want to teach and, and, and share and preach the word of God, but we don't have the grace for it. It's just like fumbling the football, right? Some of us, you know, sing really well, you know, but we can't really play any instruments that good. Some of us play instruments really well, but we can't sing that well. You have to understand your grace, right, and how and what you need to be doing in the house of God, right? So in 1 Corinthians 3, 5, Paul says, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. In other words, in, in purpose, which is bringing every man to Jesus, and Jesus training you up and raising you up and bringing you to the Father. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and other has built thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds on this foundation. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And it's interesting that, you know, we got a lot of things going on out there in this world, right? A lot of voices, man, that are, that are, that are telling us things, you know, and, and, and you just don't know who, right, to trust. 
you know, you got your media outlets and they're telling you one thing, you know, this guy did this, that guy did that, this guy represents this, and all this foolishness. And I, and I try my best not to pay attention to any of it because it, anytime I do, it'll, my mind will start wandering if I'm not careful. And, and I'll start thinking about things that, that have no basis on the Word of God. And so, so he says, so the foundation that we are and should be building is on, is on Jesus Christ, right? And what did Jesus tell him in Matthew 28, 18 through 20? He says, and the same Jesus came and spake to him, saying, all power, the word power here is exousia, which means authority, Amen. is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, one thing here says he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Well, Baptized means to be submerged under, right? Yeah. Fully. Right? Yeah. So when you're being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, you're coming to a place where you start understanding how each one operates and why it's important and how they all exist as one, in one purpose, which is the purpose of God and the will of God. And that's what that means, right? The baptism of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, okay? So now let me read this to you in... I think this was the message translation. Same, same passage here. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. And some, though held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. And Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life. M marking them by baptizing, baptism in the threefold name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then instruct them in the practice of all that I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. So, as he said to those that were bringing, he told them to go up to the mountain and get the wood, and God is going to be pleased with you. In other words, you know, it doesn't it really matter at what level. You know, you, you, you break this bread down for somebody, right? So the other day, I, was, I shared this story, I don't know, last week or so, but I was out photographing, all right? And I was out there in the woods, you know, and I like to photogra photograph wildlife and stuff. Well, I, I passed through this section that says, you know, uh, don't pack, don't, it didn't say no trespass, it says just don't be on this land, right? So they have all these big electrical poles through there, and I thought it was talking about that little section. Well. Anyway, I went on in, and then about 30 minutes later, um, I already had my stuff set up, my cameras and everything, and, and I heard this voice, a couple guys in the back, he says, Grand Prairie Police. And I was like, oh man. So I, uh, I had to put the cameras, <clears throat> one of them down, or both of them down, and then I asked them, can I come out, right? And, uh, and they said, yes, so I brought, I came out, and I had my license, he says, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm out here photographing, you know, birds and wildlife and stuff. And then he says, uh, well, we came out here because somebody reported that they heard shots. And, and he says, do, do, you own, do you own a weapon? I said, no, I don't have a gun or anything. I don't have anything registered to my name. And then um, he said, well, can I search your vehicle? I said, yeah, go ahead. Well, while he was doing that, I was talking to this other gentleman. He was an officer, right? And I was sharing with him about these birds, right? Has anybody ever noticed how the, the animals, the males, are always more predominant? More handsome? Yeah. Right? You look at a cardinal, you look at a blue jay, you look at a you know finch or whatever, they all the, the male is always more striking, more noticeable, right? And I asked him, I says, Do you know why that is? See, in other words, I was teaching him in a parable. He didn't even know he was getting the kingdom of God. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> he says, no, I don't know why. I says, because the male doesn't want the predator to see the female. He doesn't want the predator to see the babies. That's why the babies are all fleshed down, which means they're not in their full colors. Okay? So, by the same token, right, that order of what the natural speaks, right, because how be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and then afterward that which is 
spiritual. Amen. You see, the natural, you're going to understand something about the spiritual. And in the natural, the male stands out front of his wife and his children. Amen. He guards them. He protects them. He makes sure what they're listening to, what they're saying, what they're, what they're hearing. And if, and if any of it is out of order, he's going to check it by the word. He's going to clean them up. You see? That's what, that's what we do. So again, you know, I was sharing this with them. And, and, and like I said, I didn't have to talk about the Bible or anything. But he got an understanding about the kingdom of God that will stay with them forever. You see? And, and, and anyway, the guy came out, the, the other police officer says, man, he's got a, quite a setup in there. We're talking about the cameras and everything. And, uh, and then he said, well, we'll follow you out. So I had to pack up and stuff. What was funny is they were going to follow me out, but they, then the officer said, well, what's that way? I said, well, there's the rest of the path, and there's two creeks over there. you got to watch out. You're going to cross over them. So instead of following me out, they went that way, and I went that way, this way, going out. In other words, the scripture says that so shall I find favor and good understanding inside of God and man. See, they knew that I wasn't somebody that was gonna, that's not violating the authority anywhere, except for the fact that I didn't know that this land was private property, belonging to the city of Dallas. So I told the officer, I said, well, well, I won't come out to this place again, because uh, unless I have permission. But the point is, is that, you know, we, 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 we must understand that the opportunities are, are out there everywhere. And we must come to that place where we are sensitive and aware and ex have expectation in our heart that God is going to move everywhere and anytime we go, wherever we go. Amen. You just have to walk in that kind of operation. Amen. You see? So, <clears throat> now, so as, as, as God, like I said, his desire is to build up the people, I mean, to keep, get, a, get a strong unit, if you will, a base. So I call this the base of our operation, right? Right here where he's training us and teaching us. And so, and in doing so, of training and whatnot, there's the scripture in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, talking about Elijah here. And it says in those two verses that, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers. Amen. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Okay? Now, what am I saying here? Lest I come smite the, the curse. So in the natural realm, what do we see in our society today? Where, where are the fathers, in other words? What happens to the children and to the wife when the father is not there? Right? You understand? And I know about this in my own, in my own life. My dad left us when I was young. And I remember, you know, he said, I'm going to be there at a certain time, a certain day, and he wouldn't show up, and how disappointed I was. Because I needed that significance in the natural for my father. You see? And that's why, that's what the enemy wants, right? He wants to take that male out of his place so he doesn't understand his part in the kingdom of God and what he, and the significance that he is to his, to his family. So when we operate in the spirit and power of Elijah, our desire and our goal is to turn and build up the hearts of the children to our heavenly father and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, just as John the Baptist did. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord, equipping and, and getting them ready for the work of the ministry as disciples that are servants of the Lord. Amen. See, Jesus said, I didn't come to be ministered unto, but I came to minister and give my soul, my life, a ransom for many. Amen. You see, we must have this attitude like Jesus, right? This same Jesus, right, had this attitude that it's not about me, it's not about my my career, and it's not about what I want and my dreams and my visions. It was always about the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. He only desired to do God's will. He wasn't interested in anything else except what the Father wanted for him. So the thing about it is, is that in building up and making disciples, the people, you see, the scripture says in Isaiah 2, 2, that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations are going to flow to it. You see, all the nations are going to flow to the house of God, which we are, because we have the wisdom, because as the scripture says, Jesus has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Amen. And that's what we need to understand is that in us being built up, because we are the house of God. 
So they're going to be coming to us to, for answers. And right now, you know, they're in, they're in a state of rebellion, right? And, you know, a lot of people in a lot of cities are, are just rebelling against authority everywhere you look. First of all, because they don't understand the way of God. And, and the fact of the matter is, everywhere we go, we need order. We need authority. We need structure, right? Because without authority and order, there's chaos, which is what the enemy wants. That's what he is. He's all chaos. <laughs> so it says, and he uh, and many of the people shall go and say, come here, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, this word Jerusalem, in the Hebrew, means teaching of peace. In the New Testament, it says, set ye double peace. Right? So, Jerusalem is not necessarily about a city over there, Across the, net, across the sea, right? The, the Bible says, Paul said this, is that, for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, but he is a Jew which is one in, inwardly. And circumcision is a matter of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, right? Amen. In other words, on the eighth day, a Jewish child, male child, would be circumcised in the natural to signify the covenant of God the cutting of the covenant. Covenant means cutting. Something's got to get cut. So in other words, the cutting away of the flesh in our lives is a sign of circumcision. So the ones that they are the Israel of God, Israel means he will rule as God. Okay? So in other words, the people of God, which were the Israelites, were, were the ones that God desired for them to rule as he would rule in the earth. Right? So, see, we need to understand what Jesus Christ was trying to build when he said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell are not going to prevail. I'm going to build me a base of operation here in the earth and my people are going to understand how to be led of the spirit. And therefore, theocracy, which is God's form of government, is going to be able to come into the earth and dominate the demonic realm everywhere we go. And deliver and set the people free from all the, the harassment of Satan. And so, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. You see, it takes right correction. We understand this about the kingdom of God. The scripture said in Hebrews 12, what son is he when the father doesn't correct? And he says, are you bastards and not sons? So if you don't want to receive correction, then you don't need to be in the kingdom of God. Because that's how he deals with us. And that's how he cuts away the carnality and the things that are offensive to him. Sin, in other words. Now in Hebrews 3.1, it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So, consider the one who has commissioned us. Consider and understand who is the one that said unto us, Go and make disciples. Who was the one that said this? Right? It wasn't just, you know, somebody that didn't have a place to speak on behalf of the Lord. I mean, this was Jesus Christ, as he said, all authority has been given to me, both in heaven and in earth. So, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that has given us this commission. But let me ask you a question. Did he give that commission to babies? Or did he give it to disciples that had been with him for three and a half years, learning of his ways? You see, how can a, how can you expect a thirteen-year-old boy, if you will, or even a twelve-year-old boy? Because Jesus was twelve years old when he was in the temple, right, teaching them. But it wasn't his time yet because his mother and father saw him looking for him, crying, and they, they told him, "Don't you know what you put us through?" And the scripture says, from that day on, Jesus sub submitted himself. Submitted there is the word hupotasa, which means he came under the orderly arrangement of his father and mother. The structure that he was in at that time for his season. It wasn't that he wasn't anointed or grace to do what he was doing. It wasn't time yet. How can I send my 15-year-old son out into the world and expect him to start earning a living 
and get married and find him a woman, get, get a house and all this. How can I expect any of that? He's not ready. It's not the season for it. It's not any different for the Lord, man. So the scripture says <clears throat> about Jesus, consider the Lord. Now this house is, the house of the Lord is who we are. For every house is built by some men, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony to those things which are be spoken after. So the natural was prophesying and speaking of the day when Jesus was going to come and the house that he was going to build, which is being you. But it says here, but as Christ as a son, as a weos, son here means fully mature over his own house, whose house we are if we all have hold fast the confidence and rejoice in the hope firm unto the end. In other words, don't give up, right? Amen. Keep fighting, keep pressing, and so on and so on and so on. So it says Christ is a son, right? This word son here is the word weos in the Greek. It means fully mature. Every time you see a reference to Jesus Christ, son of man, son of God, it was the weos of God, the fully matured son. So We've been learning about this in the, in the beginning when I started sharing. There's five different Greek words that talk about spiritual maturity. They're napios, which means a babe. No speech. You ain't got nothing to say. You just got born again. You need to sit down and learn. Right? Amen. And what's interesting is in the Babylonian system out there in the world, you got an entertainer that gets born again. What are they doing to him? They put him on the circuit, man. You know, they want him to come to this place and to this place and to this place and share his testimony because they know he's going to draw the people. And in drawing other people, they're going to bring their money. They're going to get loaded up. That's not the way of the Father, man. He needs to sit down and wait until your season, until your time, until the appointed time of the Father, Amen. as Jesus did. Amen. So the other word is potty on. Potty on means like potty stage. It means you're starting to walk a little bit, but you still make a lot of mess. And then there's technon. Technon's like a teenager. The scripture says in John 1, 12, to as many as received him, to them gave he authority to become the sons of God. That word sons is technon. It means like a teenager. In other words, you're not ready yet still. You're starting to show some maturity, but you still mess up every now and then. And then you have weos, which is Jesus is a weos over his own house, as it says here. He was fully mature. He was ready, in other words. And then you have fathers, or the pater. Now they know they can train others and bring them up and relate them to the Father. So now our Father's intent or will was to build a place where all nations of the earth could be blessed. Let's take a look at something here about the house that Solomon built, who was a son. Right? But David, he told him, you're not going to build my house, right? But who did he commission to do it? The son. Who does he commission to build the house? Say, me, the sons of God, the daughters of God, amen? Now, in 2 Chronicles uh, 6, 9, it says, uh, Thy son, which shall come forth from thine own loins, he's going to build a house for my name. Now, I'm just going to skip through this because there's a whole lot of stuff here, a whole lot of revelation here, but in verse 11 he says, In the house that the son built, I have put an ark wherein is the covenant of the Lord. So Solomon said, The house that I built, we put the ark in there. Right? Because there was three sections to the tabernacle. What were they? The outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. Right? In the holy of holies is where the ark of the covenant was. Your spirit, man, is the Holy of Holies. Amen. Your soul is like a similitude of the holy place. That's where all the giftings and the talents and the skills are at. And that's where, as a, as a person that understands of what Jesus went through, you live your life through showbread. In other words, you're able to break off part of your life, like that story I shared with you about those grandparent police. You see, that's showbread. I'm able to give you something that was practical and help you understand something about the kingdom of God. And then, of course, our body is the outer court. So he put the Ark of the Covenant in, in the Holy of Holies, right? And so, like I said, the word covenant here means to cut. And, and when you look at the definition there, it says that uh, a cutting so that, we, so that something can pass between the pieces. There's not going to be any agreement or anything unless we make, we make a contract here, if you will. 
And that's what the Lord did through Abraham. Now, in 6.3, it says, Second Chronicles, Solomon, which was a king, blessed the whole congregation of Israel, those that rule as God. Now, one thing we need to understand here about Solomon is that he was turning around and doing ministry in the tabernacle, which was only a place given to the Levites at that time. Right? The Levitical priesthood were the only ones that could be go in and out of the, out of the tabernacle. And the high priest could only go in once into the Holy of Holies. And he had to have, offer sacrifice for himself and for his sins before he could go in. And it got to a place where uh, it got to a place where they had to tie bells on him on his ankle feet down there so that if they didn't hear him walking around in there in the tabernacle that means that he died. <laughs> he died. In other words, he had sin in his life. All right. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm getting to something here. So y'all hang with me. Talking about the house, the Solomon Belt. Now listen to what Solomon said here. He prayed a prayer. So wait a minute. Let me finish something. Solomon was a king and a priest. Okay. Now say this. I'm a king. I'm a priest. All right. Because the scripture says about Jesus in Hebrews 5, 6, that he was, as Jesus was the after the order of Melchizedek. If you go look at where Melchizedek got started, it was in Genesis 14. And the Bible says that Melchizedek came and brought him bread and wine. And he said, blessed be Abram of the Most High God. The priest blessed Abram. But not only was he a priest, he was a king. So Jesus was after that same order. The Bible says in Melchizedek that we don't know anything about his father or his mother. Where did this guy come from? And the point is, is that we're after that same order. And we need to understand that because as kings, what do kings do in the natural? They rule and they take more land. Right? They try to take another space because of the resources. The oil, the gold, the diamonds. You know, that's what kings do. So in the spiritual side of things, what do we do as kings? Who is the one that's taking our inheritance? That is taking it from us? That's right. Who is the one that steals, kills, and destroys? That's right. So he's the one that now we got to go in the spirit and dominate as he told him, take dominion, right? And subdue the earth. If the, you know, what's funny about that is that what would be the purpose of subduing something that wasn't out of control? You think back then when God said that to Abraham, Adam, that it was the animals that were having a problem with? The birds and the, and the insects and the, and the cows and the horses and the, and, the, and the fish in the sea? Was that what the problem was back then? No. So do it. It was the demonic realm, man. It was the demonic realm that brought chaos into the world. As the scripture says, in the earth was out form in darkness. Everything was pure darkness, man. There wasn't any light anywhere until God said, let there be light. And from then on, light started traveling and it's still traveling. Glory to God. And it's the same thing in our lives, right? When the light comes of the revelation of the kingdom of God, he begins to dispel the darkness in our lives. Same thing, man. Now, listen to this prayer about Solomon, the king and the priest. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 6, 19, all right, through 21 here. He says, have respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant and to, the, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prays before you, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, Say that, that your eyes may be open upon this house day and night. Eyes, you understand? You, that the, eyes, that the eyes may be open upon the house. In other words, that you're always favoring me, Father, that you're always giving me instruction and understanding. From my household, from my brothers and sisters, you quicken the word to me so that I can give them the word, etc., etc. That your eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place where thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prays towards this place. Amen. And then he says, hearken or listen therefore unto the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel. 
which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when you hear, forgive. Wow. That's so beautiful, because obviously we can't stand the presence of God if we got sin in our lives. And as a matter of fact, the first of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. See, God is so holy that he can't even see wickedness and perversion. That's why he doesn't want us to see it. That's why he doesn't want us to listen to that stuff and hear it and see it and watch it. Bah, 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 bah. All this stuff going on out there, man, the murderings and the killings. See, if we want to be that place that God's eyes are always open unto your life, and whenever you make a request and a prayer to him, on your behalf, on your behalf of your family or your brothers and sisters, or the world out there, as this lady did with Brother Daniel, and we want God to hear our prayer, then, then, then we must be sanctified and, and, and holy unto the Lord. Amen. Now, in 2 Chronicles 7, now when Solomon made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Hallelujah. And in verse 3 it says, When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves and their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, Now in the kingdom, I mean the King James it says, For he is good for his mercy endure forever. But in the King James, it has he is and endured this italicized. So when you see a word in, in the new, I mean in the King James version that's italicized, that means it's not a part of the original writings. So when you read it like this, and praise the Lord for good, for his mercy forever. You see that? For good, for his mercy forever. And so I just thought that that was precious right there because. When we know who we're talking about here for good. We want God's goodness on our lives, and we bless him for his mercy that he has for us. We don't get what we deserve, thank God, through Jesus Christ, and it's forever. Amen? Amen. Now, this next section, everybody should be familiar with this scripture, right? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. God's going to hear from heaven. And forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. Well, if this is a time right now, the time that we live in, that we don't need God to heal our land. I mean, I've never been alive with anything that's going on like what's going on now. Right? In other words, I have, I've never witnessed anything like this. And we know the land needs God. Amen. amen. They need the God that's in you. Amen. amen. They need the, the, the Holy One that's in you. They need that. man. They need to hear from heaven. And the one that's carrying Christ around is you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, verse 15, Now mine eyes shall be opened, and mine ears attempt unto their prayer that is made in this place. That's what God is saying. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. In other words, with no end. Amen. As long as we keep seeking this kingdom of God, amen, and his righteousness, his eyes and his ears are always going to be open unto her cries. Now, in Isaiah 56, 7, he says, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Now, when you think about a mountain, you need to think about an understanding of an elevated place. Right? In, in other words, a place that's not down here on the earth, if you will, in the natural realm or in the carnal realm. So he says, even then will I bring it to my mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called in house of prayer for all people, for all nations. So understanding about this tabernacle, right? They brought the sacrifices and they had this big old brazen altar and they would up, I mean, they would cut these animals up in a certain fashion and they would burn the sacrifice. And some of those coals, they would put them uh, on the uh, altar of incense as a, as a, as a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord. So this place of this tabernacle, this house we are, is a house of sacrifice. In other words, the sacrifices that you've got to lay down your life for others. Amen. 
Amen. You've got to die to yourself so that others can live. Amen. You understand? Amen. Now in 1945, this is what Jesus said, Luke 19, and he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. I remember working in a, in a, in a religious organization that I was a part of. They had a whole section of bookstore on the right over there as you walk in. Every message you needed, every video, every book. And, and it, it, it bothered me because, you know, Jesus said, you made my house of prayer, the place where you should come to be able to offer Prayer is a sacrifice, by the way. So the place that you come to make prayer, right, not to be a, a place where, I remember one of the things that they had there, where they had this, um, I don't, if you're not familiar with this area, there, there's been these signs they used to have up there about mint dentistry, right? Well, in that place where I worked at, they had this, you know, five or seven minute video about mint dentistry. Playing in the background before the message even started. Oh my God, man. So what I'm saying here is that you made my house a house of a den of thieves, man. My purpose is to build my people, to get them to a place where I'm going to hear their prayers and heal their land as they need it in their lives. Amen. Now in John 2.15, Jesus says, And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and made sheep and oxen, and the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves take these things hence for make not my father's house a house of merchandise now merchandise here is the word emporium which is a place that we go to buy and to trade goods and the disciples remember that it was written the zeal of thine house has eaten me up see Jesus is very serious about his people and he's intent on getting us mature and grown up but again, you have to be willing to hear from the Lord. And, and you've got to be, like I said, you've got to have your, your heart sensitive and aware and full of expectation of what God is going to do for your lives. Yeah. I want to read a scripture here in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. This is the angel. Okay? Angel was talking to Mary. Verse 36, it says, And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and in this the sixth month with her who was called Mary. So Elizabeth was considered somebody that couldn't even bring child, bring forth children. And, and then it says, the angel's saying this now, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. Now, this this. This word nothing there, if you look at that word, when you look at these Greek words behind it, there's three different Greek words that make up the definition for that word. And so in other words, it says, what, it, what it's saying here is that no individual word or rhema shall be impossible. In other words, I'm sharing a lot of scriptures, a lot of revelation, and whatever rhema God is quickening to you, by your circumstances and your situations, the scripture says it's not going to be impossible. Amen. And I believe that. Hallelujah. Now, now I want you to look at Luke, John chapter 1, verse 51. And look what Jesus said to Nathaniel. Amen. Amen. John 1, 51. King James, praise God. There you go. King's Bible. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. All right? Now, there's quite a few things going on here. But first of all, he says, You're going to see heaven open. All right? And then you're going to see angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, one of the things about, about the scriptures in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. 
See, it wasn't God's desire to have just one son come into maturity. His desire, as the scripture says, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many weas unto glory to make the captain of the salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Now, when we get to heaven, when I get to heaven, what do you think he's going to call me? He's going to call me brother, Joseph. See, Jesus Christ ain't about titles and names the way we are in this world. He ain't interested in all that, man. He wants to know about your character and your relationship with the Father. You see? And so he's going to call us brothers and sisters, man. That's what we are to Jesus. Jesus is your brother. Say that. Jesus is my brother. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there's another place where the Bible talks about the angels of God that ascended and descended. Anybody familiar with that? Where is it at? All right. It's in Genesis chapter 28, starting with verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Verse 12. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. And behold, the Lord stood above it, and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, the God of Isaac, and the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it unto thy seed. And the scripture says that he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is no other, this is none other but the house of God. Amen. And this is the gate of heaven. Amen. So what's happening at the gate of heaven? The doors are open. Right? See, because God's, God's ear and God's heart and his eyes are now open to the people because of Jesus. Right? Amen. And Jesus said, hereafter, you're going to see the angels of God. You're going to see heaven open. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Everywhere the Lordship of Jesus Christ is established in the son or daughter's lives, the angels of God are ascending and descending on your life. Now, you need to understand the significance of this because Jesus already knew the work that he had to perform. How could he prophesy that when he hadn't even died yet? He hadn't even offered up his blood before the, before the mercy seat, right? So verse 18, And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stones that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that place city was called Luz at the first. Now, Bethel means the house of God. So the Father's desire was to have many fully matured sons of God everywhere set up under the Lordship of Jesus Christ because there's only one Lord in our lives, and His name is Jesus. Amen. A man should have not have any other covering on his life except Jesus Christ. Because the Scripture teaches us in 1 Corinthians 11, God over Christ, Christ over man, man over woman. He didn't give us the order for example, for a male being over the woman because the male is better. You need to understand what's happening is that if we're out of order, guess what? As Jesus said, every kingdom and every house divided against itself will not stand. See, if your house is divided against yourself and the authority structure is not set up right, then the enemy is going to come in and out anytime he wants. Instead of having a gate open to heaven, you've got a gate open to hell. Now in Hebrews 2.10 it says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory. So his desire was to have sons and daughters of God representing the Father in the earth. Amen. Now, not only are the angels of God ascending and descending on your life as an individual because you are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, but when we gather corporately, the angels of God are also involved with our lives. And this is what they're doing. They're taking our prayers that we pray as the vessels of God up to the Father. 
they're ascending to the Father. And he's there hearing the prayers and, and listening to the requests. And then when they descend, they're bringing results with them. They're bringing presence of God. They're bringing revelation. They're bringing dreams. They're bringing comprehension and understanding. Last week I had a dream. And in the dream, it says, as the Lord said, Joseph, I'm going to utilize your power and your strength. And, of course, now we're here this week. And, and, I, and of course, I'm thinking for right now, what we're going through, right? In the season that we're in. Amen. But, again, that voice that came to me in that dream, it came from the place of ascension and it had to come down Hallelujah. to me. Amen. Okay? Now, so they bring, but when, like I said, the get won't work. Corporately gathered together, the angels of God are involved, and they take our prayers that we pray as the vessels of God up to the Father. So when we come together corporately, we pray in agreement, right? Yeah, man, man. On a matter. And guess what? Like I said, they're taking it up to the Father. Yeah, they ascend up and take the request that we make. They also descend and bring the results to us. They bring messages, dreams, presence, the power of God on a, on a whole other level. Yeah, because the scripture says of, of Gabriel, he says, I stand so close to the presence of God that when I leave, I take his presence with me. Amen. You know, the other day I was praying, man. I was meditating on all this. And I moved my hand up, and I could feel the cloud, man, the presence of God. And I kept moving it around. I kept, you know, I could feel the, 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 the cloud, man, moving up against my arm. And, and again, you know, like I said, what I'm telling this, this is that this is, this is what I put? The mountain of the house of the Lord and that prayer is the place of ascension. Now, not only is this ascension, descension important in the revelation of the angels of God, but we also ascend in the spirit and descend in the spirit. And let me tell you, let me show you what I mean here. In, in Ephesians 4, 8, and 9, 10, it says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, talking about Jesus, he led captivity captive. So in other words, in that place of ascension, when you're ascending up on high, just like Jesus, you lead captivity captive. In other words, God is bringing you the wisdom, the revelation, the understanding, the comprehension for the people that you encounter. So then he says, and he gave gifts unto men. Right? Amen. Everybody familiar with this? Should be. Now the word gifts here is the word domas. Doma means to make a gift of a gift. So Jesus Christ will take a man and impart to him his grace, some of these graces in their lives. And uh, and in doing so, when when he's doing that, it's, the hour is still not yet for that individual to come into what God has for him. There's got to be preparation and training, right? Now, one thing about the word gift in the Bible, in the New Testament, there's nine different Greek words for the word gift in the New Testament. It doesn't just mean a present, like at Christmas time, right? And uh, so then he says, now, one other thing here, it says he gives gifts unto men. Does that say women? But we sure got some understanding out there that tell us that that means men and women. Because you see it everywhere. Women that are apostles. Graces that he gave unto men. Now this same word men, same scripture, same Greek word is in 1 Corinthians 7, 1. Pull that one up for me. 1 Corinthians 7, 1. And I'm just going to give you this one. There's a whole bunch of them that show us this truth. Jesus was the son of man, the same Greek word. He was a man. That's right. Y'all can read that if you want. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Same Greek word that he gave gifts unto men. Y'all see that? And it wasn't about, like I said, it wasn't because they were better, it's because of order. He ascended up. He had to give back to the male the order. He's not going to violate the order just because we're liberated in the United States. 
women doing what men should be doing, men doing what women do. You understand? And he ain't thinking about all that. He's a God of war, man. Now, verse 9, it says, Now he that ascended, what is it but that also he descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Now, when Jesus ascended, he descended down the domas, the gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, to build the house, Amen. the people. Amen. He didn't give it for me to be this big time minister, teacher Joseph, you know, teacher brother Joseph. Hallelujah. You have to understand here, you know, the heart of the Father here, man. What he's trying to do in this earth, he's trying to build him up a people that understand how he operates in order. And understanding why these graces are given to us. It's so that we can train others and they keep turning around, they train others. Now when Jesus, like I said, he, he descended down something, he, but he couldn't have delivered it down if he hadn't went up first. So, like I said, to build the people for the work of the ministry. Now, when we go up to the mountain of the house of the Lord, I'm going to read this again, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let us go up, in other words, ascend to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That place of double peace. Amen. amen. Now in John 3.11, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. He says, Very, very, I say unto you, we speak that we know, he told him. And we testify what we've seen, and you don't receive our witness. I have told you earthly things, and you have believed not. How shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? How are you going to believe if I tell you those things that I got when I was in that place of ascension with my father in prayer? The father had to come down first, and he did it through Jesus Christ. The heart of the father, as it says in Malachi 4, 5, and 6, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. In other words, the sons and daughters of God in the body of Christ today the Father's heart is turned to us because of Jesus. Amen. In other words, the sacrifice, right? Somebody had to pay the price for all this sin. And the Bible tells us clearly it was Jesus. So now the heart of the Father is open. Heaven is open. The gates are open. And he says, that if I tell you earthly things, how are you going to believe me if I tell you heavenly things that I've received in that place of ascension? You can't receive the things of the Spirit of the, in that place of ascension if you're carnal. Many times, you know, when I, when I share and I teach, it's always about the kingdom of God, right? My father's realm, my, my father's domain, right? And the people, man, they just don't have a clue what I'm talking about. I remember this brother I used to hang around with. He says, Joseph, you're too deep, man. I can't figure what you're saying now, man. But the solution is to spend time with the Father, amen. Because God will quicken you as he did Brother Daniel that day. But the natural man, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. You cannot work the spirituals and the things of the heavenly realm if you're carnal. And you're fooling yourself if you think that you can just live off that gift in your life. That's not how it works in the kingdom of God. So you must live daily in that place of prayer in the presence of the Father in that place of ascension. Now, in John 3, 25, then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. And this is what John said. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. In other words, 
If you're going to stand in that place and bring forth the word of the Lord to the people, you're not going to get it if you're not spending time with the Father in the heavenly realm in that place of ascension. Amen. You've got to be where the Father is, amen? And he ain't down here doing all that carnal stuff that the body of Christ is involved in, not to mention the world, right? The world's already in judgment, right? Because they didn't receive Jesus. But we have, amen? Hallelujah. And we need to understand that, that we have a precious place with the Father. Amen. So now listen to these statements. The place of receiving from God the Father is the place of ascension. It's the high place. It's the place where you receive from the Lord. As he said earlier, let us go up to the mountain of the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. That high place is that place where you get what you get from the Father. And he wants you to turn around and descend it or return it back to the people. Amen. Ascension, descension here. So you are able to deliver or to descend what you have received in ascension. You can't give forth the new wine, a fresh anointing, and a fresh revelation if you didn't receive it while you were with the Father. You can only give forth in ascension what you've received in ascension. The place of your inheritance is received from that ascended platform. It's the heavenly realm, in other words. So as I read earlier, 1 Corinthians 3, right? I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 1, 3. No, no, no. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. The heavenly places, you're not going to get those spiritual blessings if you're not spending time with God in prayer. And when you're descending, when it comes down is when it's given. Just like Jesus gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherd, teachers, it was something that he had to give in the place after he ascended. When you haven't received from that place of ascension and you're distributing stale manna or bread, it will tickle the ears, but it will have no presence because it is not fresh. It has already descended. It has already been distributed. You remember when Jesus broke the bread and he blessed it, right? Yeah. Can you imagine if you would have given them all stale bread? <laughs> you got some water to go with this? Piece of French bread? No, oh, man, what the Lord has given us is always fresh, amen? amen. New, amen? A new anointing, a new strength. But there are times when the Holy Ghost will quicken that word, right? Because there's a principle here in... Uh, See, Matthew 13, 52. It's all about learning how to move with the Spirit of God, amen? And if he quickens the word, then, then it's fresh again. He said in Matthew 13, 52, Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and things old. And the word instructed here means to be discipled. And that, wrote, that principle tells us right there you've got scribe. Scribe means a writer or a secretary. Right? And that scribe that writes and documents what the Lord is doing, all this media stuff and recorded videos and everything, all that has to do with the scribe ministry. And so you have those that are instructed into the kingdom of heaven, and they're able to bring it new and and they're able to make the old new again by, bring, by being fresh because of the Holy Ghost in their lives. But the ones in the world, they're only interested in scribing for their own glory, right? So they can write a book so they can make it to the bestsellers list. And then the ones that are Babylonian, they're doing the same thing. They're writing it for themselves. They're not interested in building the people. They're interested in building pockets. Make them fat. Now, in John 151, I'm going to say it again here. He said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Year after you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So what I've given you is something that I received from my time with the Father. It's a fresh 
revelation and fresh understanding. And, and, and if you're content with, with delivering stale things all the time, well, you know, nobody's twisting anybody's arm, right? I want you to hear this word of the Lord, amen. I want you to close your eyes. You know, listen, man. That's from the Lord, amen. All right? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Heaven is open to you, my sons and my daughters, to hear your prayers. Heaven is open to hear your requests. The kingdom of God is now, and the heavens are open to receive and fulfill your needs. Heaven is open to deliver, to heal, to set free from bondage now. Angels of God are ascending and descending now in this place. They are ascending and taking up the prayers of sweet smelling incense to the Father. The angels of God are bringing forth their descent in the will of God to us. Understand, my people, that you are forgiven in Jesus Christ and that you are set free in me, said the Lord. As the scripture says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The Father wants us whole or saved, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody that needs prayer? The firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, both in heaven and earth, whether thrones or dominions. Firstborn of all. 